ladies and gentlemen. I'm extremely pleased and honored to celebrate the 50th anniversary of this great club with you all. And it is uh, an auspicious day. I'm sure you know that Nigeria won today. The Falcons defeated their South African counterpart 4-3 after penalties to clinch the African Women's Nations Cup. I think the women should give themselves a round of applause. In the, in the 50 years of the existence of this club, the club has established itself as a highly civilized and disciplined club. This probably explains why the activities of the club, including elections into offices, have always been very quiet and run for free. I have never heard that there was any dispute about who would be the president or the captain, as they say, of the club. I think you have a lot to teach us politicians. In any event, uh, this is the friendliest golf club in the whole world. And, and I can testify, I can testify to that legendary friendliness. I had hardly alighted from the car when I was given a quick lesson in golf and was told, instructed very quickly on how to tee off. And I was presented with what I'm told was a high quality golf set. And, of course, you know I've not sat here for longer than about an hour when the captain gave me the title of honorary member. With this, with this very friendly and rapid promotion that I've received since I got here, I will soon be Tiger Woods. I hope that that gasp was not a gasp of disbelief, but one of support for my great ambitions. I'm also aware of your support for education here in your neighborhood. And all this is commendable and in keeping with the high ideals which you have set for yourselves in the past 50 years. I also suspect that the reason why you support social forces is because you recognize that the elites in any society bear a special burden to shape, to direct, and to develop that society. There is no society in history that has grown beyond the selflessness, the patriotism, and the values of its elite. It is in the country clubs, the golf clubs, and other exclusive clubs that the elite charts the political and socioeconomic futures of their societies. It is for this reason that I believe that the Nigerian elite, as represented here, the political elite, religious, professional, and business, have a tremendous historical and moral obligation. That obligation comes from the privilege of being so much better off than the rest of society. It's a profoundly serious responsibility that privilege confers upon us, especially in a society where the vast majority are extremely poor, with all the attendant issues of illiteracy, disease, and exclusion. So we, the elite, have a responsibility to first adequately inform ourselves, and then selflessly and honestly interrogate the issues that concern the majority of our people and to solve them. To ignore them is to court tragedy. In a few short years, we will become the third most populous nation in the world, following China and India. And we will, unlike them, have the youngest population in the world also. Over 60% will be under 25. We have to plan today. And we have to deal with the problems of educating over 100 million children and ensuring health care for even double that number. We must also honestly and deliberately take over 80 million, take, take over 80 million Nigerians out of extreme poverty. 
have traveled the length and breadth of our country, whether it's in Jibia local government in Katsina, or Guma in Benue, or, or, uh, Ankara, or uh, Anka in Kogi, or Abakaliki in Ebony, wherever. The concerns of the ordinary Nigerian are the same. Jobs, shelter, education for children. Their needs are simple. But so are the solutions. If we, the elite, are sensitive, selfless, and committed to being honest. I believe that in the next 50 years, the great challenges that will face this golf club, aside from improving our uh, abilities in playing golf, will be also to chart a path for our nation as an elite, as being individuals who are so much better off than everybody else. I'm quite certain that that responsibility will not find us wanting in any way, and that all of us will make our contribution to ensuring that our nation is a fit place for, for lives and livelihoods of so many millions. So let me congratulate this club again on its 50th anniversary and to say that I pray that the coming 50 years will be so much better than the previous 50. And that, and that all of us who want to live an extra 50 years should join me in, give, in, in, in saying three hearty cheers to the Ikeja Golf Club. Only those who plan to live another 50 years. <laughs> hip, hip, hip. Hooray. Hip, hip, hip. Hooray. Hip, hip, hip. Hooray. Thank you and God bless you all.